McDonald's hamburger. The cornerstone of any nutritious breakfast. McDonald's is one of the biggest companies in the world. The Golden Arches sells its products at over 40,000 different locations around the globe. And a 2012 report by the BBC found it's the second biggest private employer in the world with 1.9 million employees. It's second only to Walmart. <laughs> McDonald's is huge. Everyone in the world loves Big Macs and Quarter Pounders and Chicken Selects and Chicken McNuggets and their particularly crispy french fries. However, despite the fast food chain's popularity, there are a lot of dark secrets that the company is either hiding or people just ignore. We don't know what it is or where it came from, but it has nothing to do with our Chicken McNuggets. Because they love the food so darn much. So here are 10 facts about McDonald's that just might shock you. McDonald's has millions of employees. The winner of our, you're actually the winner of our Golden Egg Award. With 1.9 million employees, more people have a job at a McDonald's restaurant than live in the city of Phoenix, Arizona. What are you doing? These are my good clothes. Can't go home smelling like a McDonald's. It's also more than the population of Philadelphia, the population of San Antonio, the population of San Diego. The point is, it's it's a lot of people. They have a ton of employees, like a huge amount. The second biggest amount of any private employer on the planet after Walmart, actually. McDonald's is a gigantic company. That can't be stressed enough. They have more locations across the globe than Wendy's, Taco Bell, Burger King, and Arby's all combined. McDonald's opened almost as many new locations in 2013 as Chipotle have in their entire chain. They reportedly sell 75 hamburgers every second. Every second. This tastes significantly better than sardines. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's 4,500 hamburgers a minute. It's 270,000 hamburgers an hour and 6,480,000 a day, 45,360,000 a week, 2,358,720,000 a year. That's a heck of a lot of hamburgers. And that's how they can afford to employ more people than the population of Phoenix. And funnily enough, the first McDonald's restaurant with the Golden Arches logo on it was in Phoenix. It's fun how things can sometimes come full circle, or, you know, two semicircles like that. Before we go on, take a second to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. It'll help keep us supersized with new videos. With that out of the way, let's get back into it. McDonald's is the world's biggest toy distributor. You can enjoy the goodness of milk and a friend from the new movie Sing, rated PG, in your McDonald's Happy Meal. If someone asked you what the biggest toy distribution company in the world is, you might guess Hasbro, or Lego, or Mattel, or PlaySchool, or something like that. And then if someone told you that the company was not exclusively a toy company, then you might guess Disney, probably? But you'd probably take a few guesses before landing on McDonald's. And yet, if you did guess McDonald's, you'd be right. This is all thanks to the toys it gives away with its Happy Meals. To be fair, these are just crummy little plastic things, but because they come with a meal and you don't really expect anything out of them, they can still be a whole lot of fun. Hi, Anyways, because of this, McDonald's is the biggest distributor of toys on the planet. There's a toy in 15% of all the sales of McDonald's food. That means that going off of the rough estimation that they serve 69 million meals a day, McDonald's distributes 900,000 toys every single day. The Golden Arches logo. McDonald's can be the new American church. The Golden Arches logo is the defining image of the McDonald's brand, and one of the most recognizable symbols on the planet. And yet, no one really knows where it came from. My whole life has been a lie. Two brothers named Richard and Morris McDonald realized in the 1950s as their business was growing that they would need to design a really catchy logo so that their customers could recognize when they were passing by a McDonald's restaurant. Brother Richard hashed out a quick sketch that involved two semicircles. Then architect Stanley Clark Meston was selected to turn the rough sketch into a logo design out of a total of four interviewees. Meston and his assistant Charles Fish developed this little doodle of two semicircles into what would eventually become the McDonald's logo as we know it today. But no one knows whose idea it really was. Architectural expert Alan Hess said that Meston and Fish turned the design into a tapered, sophisticated parabola with tense, springing lines conveying movement and energy. However, he added, who first suggested the parabola is unclear. So they've got one of the most recognizable images ever created, and they don't know who to attribute it to. Mickey D's once owned Chipotle. You're a food that I serve fried to billions worldwide, so you kind of should have seen this coming. It's hard to believe that McDonald's once owned the Mexican fast food restaurant chain Chipotle, but it's true. 
Back when Chipotle was starting out in the 90s and they only had 14 locations, McDonald's invested in what they saw as a distraction from their own business and helped it to expand its reach to a lovely 460 locations. Well, without McDonald's, they never would have become a big company in my view. Now, since McDonald's sold its 90% share of the company back in 2006, Chipotle has well over a thousand locations and is still going strong. Chipotle's COO Gretchen Selfridge has since opened up about the McDonald's shareholders' input into their business. According to Selfridge, the top McDonald's brass were basically trying to turn Chipotle into Mickey D's. They wanted to implement all the features and selling points of a McDonald's restaurant into the Chipotle restaurants. We really broke all the fast food rules. But Selfridge says that the Chipotle bosses just weren't interested in doing any of them. Selfridge explained in an interview with Bloomberg, bless their hearts, McDonald's had a lot of great suggestions, and we were always polite about it. They really wanted us to do drive throughs they really wanted us to do breakfast, but we really just didn't do any of that. McDonald's and the hot coffee lawsuit. I screamed. Not realizing I was burned that bad, I knew I was in terrible pain. In a highly publicized 1994 court case termed Stella Liebeck v. McDonald's Restaurants, a 79-year-old lady named Stella Liebeck sued McDonald's for serving her a cup of coffee that was too hot. Liebeck was promised $2.86 million by the original trial, but only ended up getting $640,000 in the end. In the media, it was used as a prime example of frivolous litigation and described by ABC News as the poster child of excessive lawsuits. However, as argued by a 2011 HBO documentary movie about the case and legal scholar Jonathan Turley, the lawsuit was anything but frivolous, since the coffee was about 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Liebeck spent eight days in hospital and underwent skin grafts after spilling it on herself. You probably remember this incident being parodied on an episode of Seinfeld, but it's not exactly an accurate representation. We sure don't remember Kramer needing skin grafts. You get me one coffee drinker on that jury, you gonna walk out of there a rich man. <laughs> Chicken McNuggets. I'll have the nuggets, please. Lovely. Ah. Uh. Oh, I sense this choice will not end well for you. This should come as no surprise, but there's hardly any chicken content in a Chicken McNugget. The McDonald's website claims that their nuggets are made with 100% USDA grade A chicken, but there's no accounting for how much of that is actually quality breast meat, and one report has that figure at just 45%. So less than half of an innocent little Chicken McNugget is made of real, good quality chicken meat. Yikes. And not only do the Chicken McNuggets contain barely any chicken, but they're also rammed with chemicals that give you the impression that they're fresh pieces of chicken. The company has to do this, because they keep them in the freezer until they run out of McNuggets out in the kitchen and someone orders some more. Seriously, imagine what Gordon Ramsay would have to say if he had a poke around in the kitchen at McDonald's restaurant. I feel like <clears throat> I need a new set of teeth. It is repulsive. He'd have a heart attack. I I'm shutting it down. TBHQ is one of the chemicals used to play God and unnaturally preserve the McNuggets, and it contains acetone, alcohol, and ethyl acetate. Studies have found that TBHQ is totally unsafe for consumption. It leads to, among other things, vision impairment, liver enlargement, and paralysis. So apparently, if you eat enough chicken McNuggets, you'll go blind, your liver will explode, and you'll be paralyzed. McDonald's fatty salads. When Mickey D's first started out, we didn't have the same ideas about healthy eating that we have today. This is back in a time where vegetables came in cans, broccoli was exotic, and potatoes counted as a salad. But even by those standards, the Golden Arches never presented itself as a health food spot. It was a burger joint. If you wanted healthy food, like a salad or some fruit, then you had to go to a different place, a place that did specialize in those things. But at a few decades, a bunch of marketplaces where McDonald's is the central affordable option and a general movement towards health-conscious eating, and the fast food giant was convinced to offer some green veggie options. But don't be fooled, this salad dressing is pure window dressing. The next time you're in McDonald's, if you're trying to be conscientious about health concerns and want to go for the slightly healthier option, you'd be better off getting a Big Mac than a salad. Mm. <gasps> Seriously, the salads at McDonald's contain more calories fat and salt than the hamburgers. The kale salad at McDonald's literally contains more calories, fat, and sodium than a double Big Mac burger. McDonald's Monopoly Scam. Your chances of finding Boardwalk is one in 602 million, so good luck, Sarah, with that.
The McDonald's Monopoly game is a lot of addictive fun. Players head to McDonald's as often as they can in order to get their hands on as many game pieces and prizes as they can. They keep little collections in the hopes of winning a ton of money and stuff, but for years, the more astute McDonald's customers have been questioning whether this game is legit or just another marketing ploy that's ultimately a scam. With 100 million food and cash prizes. Although the company claims to have a rigorous and thorough security protocol in place to prevent monopoly-related scams from happening, still, of course, they do. Between 1995 and 2000, an outside contractor named Jerome P. Jacobson, who worked for Simon Marketing, the firm that McDonald's hired to help with their monopoly promotions, took all the most valuable game pieces from the McDonald's Monopoly game and shared the proceeds among his buddies and coworkers. Over the course of those five years, while McDonald's customers were falling for the marketing ploy and buying as many meals as they could in a desperate attempt to win prizes, Jacobson and his cohorts had already made off with all of the best ones and banked more than $24 million. Go to jail, go directly to jail. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. Big Macs are dessert. This is not Greek yogurt, nor will that ever be kale. You know how there continue to be pickles on Big Macs even though nobody likes them? Well, apparently that's because if they weren't on there, the percentage of sugar in a Big Mac would technically classify it as a dessert. What's in the bag? Lunch. Big Mac, fries, play you for it. There are eight grams of sugar in a Big Mac. The McDonald's website claims that the sugar is in the Big Mac for the bun only. Most of this sugar is found in the bun, it says. Sugar is a traditional ingredient used when making bread, providing food for the yeast and assisting with the browning, texture, and volume of the bun. To be fair, this does make like some sense since a Big Mac is mostly bun. It's not just the bun on the top and the bottom. There's a middle piece between those two patties too, if you recall. Still, eight grams of sugar in three pieces of bread? That seems excessive. So imagine that. Big Mac burgers have been sweetened so much that they're virtually a dessert. People will still eat them with that knowledge because they're tasty, but it's pretty weird that we're having dessert for dinner. This is a tasty burger. Vincent, have you ever had a Big Mac? The Suggestive Golden Arches. Hello! The Golden Arches logo of the McDonald's fast food chain is one of the most widely recognized brand images on the planet. In fact, it's recognized by even more people than the cross. Like, you know, that cross. John Lennon is often misquoted as saying that the Beatles were bigger than Jesus, but McDonald's, or at least its logo, might actually be bigger than Jesus. It's kind of been statistically proven at this point. But a clinical psychologist named Louis Cheskin has a rather unusual idea about why that logo sticks in our minds so very, very well. <sighs> Mama! He believes that the golden arches on a McDonald's restaurant are essentially, to the unconscious parts of our minds, Mother McDonald's breasts. Hey, then. It is merciful Jesus. That set off Freudian applications to the subconscious mind of the consumer. So, in other words, the golden arches on a McDonald's outlet remind us of our mom's boobs, and therefore make us feel safe about going in there and purchasing some food. We feel nurtured by Mother McDonald's breasts in the same way that we used to feel nurtured by our own mother's breasts when we were babies. That's some deep, dark stuff for a simplistic, recognizable brand image. <laughs> Help keep us golden by hitting that subscribe button so you always know when we upload a new video. And while you're here, check out some of our other vids too.